So we start with the idea that we have a hole of some sort and within the hole we have two pieces and this fraction model lets us uh, display this very neatly, two pieces that are equal in size. So the most important information that the students need is that there are two equal parts. That's really the definition for deciding when we have halves and when we don't. They must, there must be two and they must be equal, equal in size, not necessarily in shape, but generally speaking, they will be the same shape, of course, uh, because we're going to use common um, geometrical shapes. So here are some shapes. Now, what we don't want to do is to present the children, the students, with an example like that and say, here we have two halves, I want you to shade in one half. Now, that is an exercise you could do, but it is so simple, the cognitive demands on the students are so low that I don't really think they're learning very much because you've already provided the halves, it's already divided up, you've given them the new terminology of course and all they have to do is bit of, do a bit of colouring in. So rather than that we want to vary it and basically get the students used to problem solving and mathematical thinking even at this young age. Um, it's basically in my view it's never too young to start. So here are some shapes so what we could do is say I'm going to divide these into two pieces and I want you to decide which ones are divided into a half and which ones are not. So we're going to provide counter examples if you like so that students can fine tune their understanding of what a half is because basically we're building a category in their thinking so that they understand what a half is and then they can go and recognize it. If all we ever showed them was two equal parts they might just assume that half means one out of two um, instead of one equal part out of two equal parts. And so we could show the students examples like this and say, all right, I want you to um, put a, a, a tick, a check mark next to each one that has been divided into two equal parts and then shade the ones that are equal. So this is not equal, so we won't shade this, but this one here is, this is, that's not, that's not, that's not, this one is and that one is. And so that will help the students to discriminate between, as I said, those examples that are halves and those that are not. So that's one uh, type of exercise. Another one is to ask the students to draw the halves themselves. So initially, of course, provide them with the shapes, ask them to draw a line dividing it in half. But we can extend that activity further so let me draw what I mean, like so. So we're going to draw a number of rectangles here that are basically congruent or the same size and proportions. So let me go to, uh, that's probably enough. So we could provide our students with a shape repeated. I'm using a rectangle because it's somewhat interesting. You could do it with a circle, but of course all the ways of dividing a circle basically look the same. It's just rotated differently. With a rectangle it's more interesting. So we could say I want you to divide the first rectangle into two equal parts. And what are we going to call those? We're going to call them halves. We'll shade it in. There we are. So we have one half of a rectangle. With the second rectangle I want you to divide that into two equal parts in a different way. So a student might divide it this way. There are two equal parts. Are they still half? Yes they are. See if you can divide the next one another way. So we could say well let's divide it diagonally. Are those two pieces equal? Yes they are. Of course we could have a cutting out exercise so the students could cut it out and then um, turn it around and see if it fits over the top of the other one and so on. Can we keep doing this? Are there any other ways of dividing by half? Now of course there's another diagonal but I'll skip that one because we've done the diagonal. What else could we do? Here's an example we could do this. Now that would be very challenging for a young student but if you provide enough stimulus, enough of a challenge, the right sort of questions, of course young children can um, stretch their thinking. 
and so they can demonstrate as i said mathematical thinking as well here's another one even trickier in fact if we think about it the number of ways of dividing a rectangle into two equal parts is infinite mathematically speaking there is no end to the number of different ways that we could divide a rectangle into two pieces so um, use it for just in terms of the mathematical side of it we could say this one here we could generalize where this is x that length there has to be x as well and x can be any length up to the length of the rectangle and then we join those two pieces together um, and there we have a way and we can simply vary x this of course is a special case of x where it's the full length of the rectangle this one here is another special case of x where it's exactly half of the rectangle so there are ways of challenging the students even at this level um, as they develop their understanding of what one half is